Lesson 5.3a, Finding an Original or Final Amount. Sales tax, which is the tax on the sale of an item or service, is a percent of the purchase price that is collected by the seller and given to the government. The relationship between an original amount and the amount after a percent change is a proportional relationship. For a given sales tax rate, we can use proportional reasoning to find the total cost if we know the price, or find the price if we know the total cost. We're going to let P equal price. So method one to find price, we're going to use proportions. We have our percent and we have our dollars. 100% divided by 100% plus the tax percent is equal to the price divided by the price plus the tax dollar. Now, if this is really confusing, just stick with me. I'll explain this the best I can. Emma bought a sewing machine. The total cost, including a 7% sales tax, was $192.60. What was the price, P, of the sewing machine? So here's the price, P, of the sewing machine. That's 100% of the price. Here's the 7% tax, and here's the total cost. It's the price of the sewing machine plus that 7% tax. So here we've got the total price split into tenths, 10%, 10%, 10%. These are each 10% in between the dotted lines. So a 7% tax would be a little bit less than 10%, wouldn't it? For the total cost, we have the same length as the price plus that little piece, that little 7%. If this price is 100%, then, with the tax, we're at 107% of P, of the price. So we can draw a bar model to visualize the problem. And since 100% is not evenly divisible by 7%, we can use a proportion or equation to solve the problem. So the total cost for the price of the sewing machine with tax was $192.60. P is going to be our price. Our tax is 7%. So this is method one, the first method using a proportion relating price to total cost. We have 100 divided by 107 because the price is 100% of the amount and the tax is 7% of this amount. So we have 100 divided by 107 is equal to P divided by that 192 and 60 cents. We multiply both sides of the equation by 192 and 60 cents. We can write them over a 1 to make our multiplication straight across easier. So here, 192 and 60 cents times 100 is going to be 19,260 over 107. Here, we have 192 and 60 cents times P. That's going to be 192 and 60 cents P. Here, it's multiplied by one identity property. It's going to keep its identity, so we have 192 and 60 cents. Now, if you notice right here, we've got the same numerator and denominator, so this is really a 1P. And we don't have to write that 1, do we? When it's just a 1 next to the variable, we can just write the P. When we divide 19,260 by 107, we get 180. The sewing machine price was $180 before tax. And we can check this, make sure it's reasonable. $180 multiplied by 0 0.07 for 7% is equal to $12.60. And if we add $180 plus $12.60, we get that total cost. $192.60. So method two, that would be using an equation relating price and total cost. We have our total cost is equal to 100% of the price plus 7% of the price. That means we have 100% plus 7%. That's 107% of the price. And we know our total cost is $192.60. It's going to equal 1.07, that's 107% written as a decimal, 
multiplied by p. In this one, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 1.07. We had 192 and 60 cents is equal to 1.07 p. We divide both sides by this 1.07. We do it on this side and we do it on this side. When we do it on this side, we have the same numerator and denominator, it makes a 1, a 1p, one but we don't have to write that 1. On this side, 192 and 60 cents divided by 1.07, we move that decimal point over in the 1.07 to back here. That means we have to move this decimal point over two spaces, so the decimal point's going to be back here, and we get 180 is equal to P, which means the sewing machine is $180. Here's another example of using an equation relating price and total cost. We have our total cost, and it's equal to that 100% of the price plus whatever the tax percentage is multiplied by the price. So if the price, P, is $50 for some item, and the tax rate is 6%, we're going to have 100% plus 6% for that tax rate times P, that $50. We put the 100 and the 6% together, we get 1.06 as a decimal. We're going to multiply it by P, that's $50, and 1.06 times $50 is $53. We know the total cost is $53. And the total cost for a $50 item with 6% tax is $53. And we can check it. We can write the tax, 6%, as a decimal, multiply it by $50, and we get $3. We add the 50 plus the $3, we get $53. We know we did it correctly. Now let me show you this real quick. This is dividing both sides of an equation to solve. If we had 24 is equal to 8p, we divide both sides of the equation by this coefficient 8. Remember, a coefficient is the number just to the left of a variable. We divide this side by 8 and this side by 8. We end up with the same numerator and denominator, which is a giant 1, isn't it? So we have 1p, but we don't have to write the 1 when it's just 1. We get 24 divided by 8 is 3, and we get p, 1p on this side. We know that 3 is equal to p. We were able to solve 4p to find the value of p by dividing both sides by this coefficient 8. Make sure to multiply the price by the tax rate to find the dollar amount of the tax. If we have a $30 shirt plus a 5% tax, when we put these together, we're going to get the total cost. We do $30 plus... $30 times 0 0.05, that's 5% written as a decimal. We multiply the price of the shirt times the percentage of tax written as a decimal. We get $1.50. We add the original amount of the shirt to that 5% tax amount of $1.50, and the total cost is $31.50. To find the dollar amount of the tax, we multiply the price of the item times that tax percentage written as a decimal. We're finished with 5.3a. We're going to move on to the second part, finding simple interest. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day, and I hope this was helpful. And join me for the second part of the lesson. Bye.